guys and welcome to the channel. Um, I forgot to film an intro. Well, actually, I didn't forget to film an intro. Film the intro for the video that you're about to watch. What ended up happening is all that GoPro footage that got deleted. Um, the intro to this video actually got deleted along with it. So I just want to go ahead and um, let you guys know what's going on. This is going to be a motor job on a 2004 Infiniti G35. Just something, you know, just to give you a rough idea when we do regular mechanic work on the channel. Now, this was supposed to be a three-part video series because originally it was supposed to be the engine's break breakdown of taking the engine out of the car. Then we were supposed to go ahead and show you guys how to do a timing belt, I'm sorry, timing chain and water pump on the, on the new motor before we put it in. The footage for the motor teardown and reassembly actually got lost along with the actual intro for this video. So I'm just going to give you a brief, you know idea what's going on I wanted to record this before I go ahead and get into the video so it's not just jumping straight into action and you know thank you for tuning in and hopefully like I said as time goes along the videos will get better for you thanks crazy when you're doing a motor job right doing coming for one thing one thing only you're coming for a motor job then you go under the car the whole exhaust molded together literally no cut no fault of the customer customer don't know he either bought the car like this or he took it to get some exhaust work done and this is how they did him but this is the crazy part right if you look at the front of the car right it's got a different color bumper than the rest of the car. We want to take the radiator out to put the radiator so that way I can take the motor out. And look what I found. Look at this here. The radiator is not attached to the rest of the car, people. Look at this. Ain't this wonderful? Yeah, that's what's supposed to be holding your radiator and your AC condenser. I figured y'all get a kick out of that. So we gotta call the customer and let him know. <laughs> we need a front end radiator support because uh, eventually he's gonna be driving this and hit another power and the whole radiator gonna fall out. But I figured y'all find that funny.
right, so went ahead, basically got the whole front end pulled off the car. I showed you early in the video, the radiator support was broke. So we ended up pulling the whole radiator support. Wanted to pull it anyway, so that way we can go ahead and pull the motor out. Makes it easier, as you can see. Now you got a clean run. Once everything's disconnected, the wire harness and everything has already been disconnected. I'll take the accessories off the front that are gonna stay with the car, which will be the power steering pump. The AC lines are disconnected, so those can actually, the AC compressor can actually come with the motor. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and strap it up in the morning, go ahead and pull it out. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the power steering and the fan and everything off the front tonight before we shut down for the day. Um, it's pretty much, this is the progress. We got the whole front nose off. Just to show you, you know, got the bumper here, bumper support. Bumper support is held, was held on by like three or four of the seven screws that hold on the actual support to the body of the car. And you have the core support here, which is where the radiator and the condenser sits. You can see there's basically an entire chunk missing here. It's like, it's in two, three pieces. There's no support for the bottom of the radiator because not only is it broke here, it's broken here. So that's why the radiator was so loose when we were moving the upper hose to try to get it disconnected. Once I took the upper and lower hose loose, the entire front of the car was moving around by itself. So we're going to go ahead. We have this order. This should be in in a couple of days. So that way we can get the, when we get the motor in, we can go ahead and start putting everything together. But we would have to wait for this to come in in order to put the front end back on the car. Uh, that's maybe like a couple hours worth of work. Maybe if, if that, maybe an hour or two. So this is the status where we're at right now. We're going to go ahead and pull the. see we got the motor out we got the motor out this this cruddy thing was leaking from every single gasket it could possibly leak from leaked so much oil to the point where there was barely any oil in the motor and the timing jumped so to make sure we don't have that issue with the new motor that's about to go in we're about to do pretty much every gasket you can think of oil pan gasket upper and lower we're going to do timing cover and we're gonna do valve cover gaskets. In the process of doing that, as you can see down on the cart, we have our Gates water pump and our Gates thermostat that's gonna go in. We also have a timing set that's gonna go in the motor before it goes back in the car. But I just wanna give you an idea of how disgusting this motor was. Every time I tried to grab it to pull it out, it would just slip it out of my hands. And the fact that it's got permanent downpipes because somebody decided to weld the entire exhaust together on both sides. We're not even going to talk about that. But we're going to go ahead and strip this motor down. 
get the, everything we need off of it and all the spare parts we're going to give back to the customer so he'll have doubles of everything. And then we start working on tearing down the new motor, get the timing set, put on that. We're going to do a step-by-step -step on that probably next video. But one thing I just have to let you know, if you ever decide to go in your driveway or go in your backyard and pull the motor out yourself, if you don't know anything about automatic G35s and 350Zs, always remember, that's the dipstick for the automatic. That one 10 millimeter bolt right there, always remember to pull that bolt out before you try to pull the motor. Because you'll be pulling on the motor, the trans, the dry shaft, and everything else, like I was, because I forgot about it. So... That's just a little tip for you. We're gonna go ahead and try to clean this engine bay up just a little bit before we stab the new motor in too, because this is just shows you how much oil was leaking over the course of this motor committing suicide. But see, we got her out. We're gonna go ahead and tear down the other motor, get all the coils and everything off that we need, AC compressor and stuff of that nature. And then we're going to go ahead and show you a step-by-step -step next video of how to tear that G35 motor down, install a timing chain, water pump, and thermostat, put it back together, seal it all up, and get it ready to go back in the car. So, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to show you how to tear down a G35 VQ engine, how to pull the front cover, pull the oil pans correctly so that way you don't break anything, Go ahead, do the timing chain, water pump, thermostat, and the tensioner on this. Check the guides, make sure all of that is good before we put the motor back in. And basically just get it prepped and ready to go so that way we can go ahead tomorrow and put the motor back in the car. Now, I don't know if the build series of the build of the motor and also the installation is going to be in the same video or if it's going to be in the next video. But we got minus the coffee. We got all the parts ready to go in. We got our water thermostat. We got our Gates water pump. We got plugs, oil filter, belts. I'm um, waiting on the tensioners and the sealer for the oil pans and the gaskets to show up. Go ahead and show you got all the good stuff for it. So we're about to go ahead and start tearing this down. We're going to do a time lapse of just getting all the accessories and all the hoses and wire harness and everything off of it. Then we're going to slow it down and do a step-by-step -step of how to pull the timing cover, the oil pans, lower and upper, and uh, getting to the timing components. This is just a little, little trick. If you're dealing with a motor, especially a used motor from a junkyard, if you got anything exposed, exhaust manifolds, intake manifold, anything off of the motor, but you're still dealing with like old crusty wiring and harnesses and nuts and bolts and screws. Anything that you could possibly drop in the motor, take two seconds. Get some rags or get some shop towels or something, stick it in each of these intake ports. So that way when you go to start the motor up after you put all that time and all that money into putting it together and you start hearing rah, 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 and all types of noises because you didn't drop the 10 millimeter bolt a screw or an acorn inside the motor and then shoot it up and destroy something. Take two seconds, save yourself a motor. Eh, just a little tech tip. All right, pretty much we got it stripped down to the point where we're ready to take the valve covers off and the front timer cover. But to take the front timer cover off, we're gonna have to pull the oil pan, the upper and the lower in order to get it off. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt the manifolds back on the car. I'm sorry bolt the manifolds back on the motor, lift that up onto the engine hoist so that way we get access to the oil pan, take both the lower and the upper oil pan off so that way we get access to the four bolts that go into the bottom of the timing cover. If those four bolts weren't there, otherwise you'd be able to pull the timing cover off by just taking all those tins off surrounding the outside of the motor. But of course they wanna put four bolts inside of an oil pan inside of another oil pan. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get it up in the air get it taken apart so that way we can access the chain and see what's going on in there and go ahead and get the water pump and the timing chain tensioner changed out. All right, we got the valve covers off. I'm gonna drop those in the hot tank, get them cleaned up. Getting ready to pull the timing cover off. But before we do that, we gotta get the motor up in the air in order to pull the oil pan and to pull the lower and upper oil pan. So to do that, we're gonna bolt the manifolds back on first before we go ahead and take the oil pan off so that way we can strap it up 
put it on the engine hoist, lift it up, so that way we can get it off this milk crate. Put manifolds on. I always seem to like to use either this right here that we get from Stainless Works, or use the orange Permatex from the Permatex company. Put it around the ports before you put the manifolds on, so that way it ensures that you don't get any leaks once the manifolds start to expand and contract. It basically takes up all the little imperfections in the manifold before you tighten it down, so that way when you do tighten it down, as you drive it, it doesn't create uh, exhaust leaks and make exhaust noise, which sounds horrible on a VQ or really on any car. So we're gonna go ahead and get these manifolds slapped on. And then once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and strap it up in the air so we can get the oil pans off and start taking the time to come off. There you go. Got the water pump timer chain back installed. About to put a thermostat on in the morning. Unfortunately, they sold me the wrong thermostat. It goes right there. We got our valve cover gaskets done. We got plugs. We got our coils back in. Pretty much got it buttoned up to go back in in the morning.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Got it, went ahead and got the headlights, the front rise support, the radiator condenser, and well, we actually got to put that fan back in. If you can see right there, you got to put that fan back in, which is for the AC condenser. But we're about to run and go pick up some uh, coolant for it and go pick up a hose union. If you don't know about these cars, they have a bleed port in the back on the upper heater hose. We got to go pick one of those up because when I took the motor out, of course, it's old and rotted and it snapped in half. So we're going to go pick one of those up. We're going to go pick some, some coolant and we'll get right back with it. Go ahead and um, finish putting the front on, get it bled. Get the All right. So back in the shop, we ain't got some coolant, got some, uh, got a connector for the heater hose. So that way we can get that all tightened up. I'm um, going to go ahead and, you know. Show you what we're talking about as far as the connector is concerned. Get that done, and then we're going to go ahead, start wrapping up the front, get it running, let it bleed, so that way we can get it all out of here. Yeah, so. Back with the coolant, back with the, you know, got some coolant. Picked up a couple bottles and some quick, some 50-50 uh, green. We're going to go ahead and show you guys what needs to be replaced. If you go ahead and look here, it's basically a union. The factory one, uh, focus, 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 focus. There we go. It's a union. goes in between the two pieces of the heater hose for the upper heater hose, the clamps. Uh, what happens is the factory one, actually where it gets worn out and it splits. So... This is where the factory bleeder goes. We can get some light down in here. Get some, ah, there we go. This is where it goes right here. This is one end right here. And then you see the other end right here, which actually still has the piece still stuck in it. See it in there. Uh, that usually has a factory bleeder on it. So that way, when you fill the cooling system up, you can go ahead and bleed the system with a little cap. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bypass that because we're going to use the vacuum fill on the motor, go ahead and fill it up, get all the air out of the system, let it run, let it thermostat open up, make sure we have heat. Here we go. Got the cooling system all bled on it. Got the front end put back on. Headlights, bumper, rad support, AC charge, ready to go.
running nice and quiet, it's running smooth. Got everything hooked up. Ready to go. Well, most likely I'm gonna make this all one video because some of the footage was lost for the engine tear down when we did the timing belt, well sorry, the timing chain and water pump. GoPro froze, lost a lot of footage, basically the whole motor tear down. I was gonna do I was doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to do a timing chain and a water pump on one of these outside of the car by taking the timing cover off, but we lost all that footage. So I mean probably gonna end up putting this all together as one engine job video so that way I can get it out to you guys. So thank you for subscribing, tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any suggestions, any comments, please feel free to leave them in the section below. And click on that subscribe button. Talk to you later. Peace.